If you're new to running, welcome. It's a great adventure and one of the most rewarding pastimes you can do. But it's not without its risks and mistakes can derail your progress and knock your confidence. So today, we're gonna to help you out by pointing out GTN's most common mistakes that new runners make. Before we start, let's point out that these mistakes are common. All new runners make them. So don't beat yourself up too much if you've made this mistake or are making them. But it's far better to learn from the mistakes of others. So here goes. Mistake number one, too much, too soon. We don't want to hamper your enthusiasm in any way. If you're new to running and you're looking forward to your next run, as soon as you finish your last run, that's great. But don't do too much too soon. Your body needs time to adapt. Muscles will take three to six weeks to adapt to a new stimulus. And bones, tendons, and ligaments can take six weeks to six months to adapt to the new stimulus. It can be tempting to pick a race and enter it that is right at the limits of what you're capable of doing. And you should, but make sure that that race is at a date where you have enough time between now and then to actually prepare for it properly. Don't push your limits too much. And don't expect every run to be further than the last run. That's definitely a recipe for disaster. Rather, choose a manageable distance and stick to that distance until you can do it comfortably and then start adding pace or distance to that run. Otherwise, you risk shin splints or knee pain or hip niggles and uh, that will definitely derail your progress. Mistake number two, running in cheap running shoes. Running is a cheap sport, and if you started your running journey just by grabbing whatever trainers you had lying around and going for a run, that's no problem. But if you want to keep running and stay injury free and make running part of your lifestyle, you should invest in the right shoes. Now, you don't need $200 super shoes, but you should have shoes that fit you well, are appropriate for your distances and terrain, are appropriate for your foot strike and your body shape, and are used exclusively for running. If you're not sure where to start, head to your local running shop and they'll be only too pleased to help you out. Mistake number three, trying to make every run faster. Seeing progress is great, and running that same route you did last month faster than you could possibly have done it then is amazing for your motivation. But this little fitness test should be used sparingly and infrequently. Uh, trying to go and run yesterday's run loop faster than you did yesterday's run loop every day is a recipe for disaster and at the very least a failure. It is far better to run really slowly. You will still be adding more fitness than you would have done if you were lying on the couch. Mistake number four, eating and drinking your way to a bad run. When you run, you're asking a lot of your body and it's gonna to have to move blood to all those working muscles, leaving precious little for your stomach and gut. So if you eat too much before you run, you are going to set yourself up for an uncomfortable run. Avoid eating anything too large for two to three hours before you run and don't gulp down an entire bottle just before you go. Rather, stay hydrated throughout the day and therefore you won't have to rehydrate just before you go run. Also, it's worth noting that you don't need to carry water for every single run. While getting dehydrated is not a good thing, you won't get too dehydrated in a 30 to 45 minute run. Unless it is extremely hot, you should be able to get through the run with the hydration that's already in your body without carrying any water whatsoever. Mistake number five, wearing the wrong clothing. You can wear whatever you want to wear. There are no rules, but wearing the wrong clothing can lead to a very uncomfortable and unenjoyable run. The wrong clothing can cause rubbing and chafing, overheating or getting too cold. You wanna wear technical fabrics that wick moisture away from your body, and you wanna dress for about 10 degrees warmer than the actual air temperature. So if it's 10 degrees Celsius, you wanna dress for it being 20 degrees Celsius if you're going for a run. And if it's zero degrees Celsius, you wanna dress as if you're walking around in 10 degrees Celsius. Also, there's no shame in applying some anti-chafe or Vaseline to the problem areas before you head out for a run. Mistake number six, not adding variety. Not every run should be the same. Don't keep running the same route. Don't keep running the same pace. Don't even keep running at the same time of day. Explore new routes, especially on your easy runs. And do easier runs. 
As we said earlier, not every run needs to be at the same pace. Some should be shorter, some should be longer, some should be faster, and some should be slower than you're capable of. Some, you can even vary it during the run and do some injections of a minute or two at a higher pace and then back to your normal easy pace. Mistake number seven, not listening to your body. Hmm. You may be out of practice on this one and your body may sound like it is just screaming for mercy the entire time. But if you can hear past that, your body will give you all the cues you need to be a better runner. Like feeling energetic when it's recovered from the last run or feeling tired and flat when it hasn't. And giving you little cues that there are niggles that need to be looked after. If you do have a niggle, then rest. If you're feeling tired and flat, then shorten the next run or even just go for a walk. On that note though, your mind and body are a bit lazy. They suffer from inertia. So if you're deciding whether you're too tired to go for a run or not whilst you're lying on the couch, you'll almost always be too tired to go for that run. So put your kit on, tie your shoelaces and get out the door and then decide how tired you are. And if you're still feeling tired, you can cut the run short or even just reduce it down to a walk but at least you got out the door and it wasn't just your mind being lazy a good way around this is to get friends involved if you're meeting a friend you can always meet them and say i'm not feeling great i might have to cut this one short but at least you know it wasn't your mind and just being a bit lazy and convincing yourself that you needed another rest day when you really didn't and that's it from us from our seven beginner mistakes hopefully you guys haven't made any of those and we've preempted them, uh, prevented you from doing them by teaching you before you made the mistake. But even if you have made the mistake, forgive yourself, move on, and happy running.